It certainly included fun, but the week-long experience called NOAC also offered entertainment, inspiration, education, and fellowship. For more than a thousand older adults from all across the Church of the Brethren, the third National Older Adult Conference provided a wonderful opportunity to witness firsthand the abilities of people in their age group and be motivated to share those abilities both with society and with the church. This conference pro provided a place for uh, older adults in our denomination to come together for uh, friendship, renewing friendships, renewing their uh, their contacts with the church, it keeps, helps uh, this generation of people stay in touch with what's happening within the church. NOAC offered so many opportunities that people of any age would have found it difficult to participate in everything on the schedule. Early risers could start with a short devotional time led by a different person each day in the chapel at the Lake Junaluska Assembly, a 1,200-acre facility which surrounds a huge man-made lake on the edge of the Great Smoky Mountains. Walking around the lake was also an early morning option, as was a light exercise class. The main schedule began with a Bible study led by Steve Reed, a seminary professor from Austin, Texas, who is active in the Church of the Brethren. The prophet is in many ways very similar to you. You have been here for a week and you have had a wonderful time. And you've had an experience and God has possibly spoken to you. The prophet then feels compelled. You remember what Jeremiah said, I don't want to say this, but it's like a fire in my bones. The prophet is compelled because of that experience to go home and proclaim the word. A prophet is one who uses that experience of God as a new way of interpreting dreams and visions and our life together. One of the highlights for me was Steve and uh, Reed's Bible study sessions every morning. They were fantastic. He made the Bible so interesting and, and meaningful, the passages that I'd always known. He, he just has a knack for that. The Bible study was followed by a general session each morning on a variety of topics. Keith Miller began on Tuesday with a session designed to help those who attended NOAC discover what their dreams are and develop a strategy for reaching them. You're not going to worry about what your husband or wife is finding. You have a dream of your own. So many of us have lived out the dreams of, of our uh, mates. This has been particularly true of women in our culture. We've assigned you that duty. And, and when somebody, when the husband dies, the woman is often bereft because not only has she lost her husband, she's lost her life because her life was wrapped up in him. Miller, who also preached during the opening Monday evening worship service, is a former businessman who has developed a national following as a speaker and author. After Monday evening's worship, Gail Apple Dahl, a health consultant from Kansas, led the conference in an exercise demonstration and advised those gathered that laughter is an important ingredient to good health. Her advice was that a person should laugh 12 times a day. If that was true, Wednesday's general session speaker provided a year's worth of good health with a presentation that kept no actors in stitches. Tom Mullen, professor of creative writing and preaching at Earlham School of Religion, outlined his views on living longer and other sobering possibilities. Laughter is a gift from God. And our ability to laugh enables us to cope with a lot of otherwise painful experiences. And I think it's an expression of faithfulness because when we're able to laugh in a world like ours, it's a way of saying that ultimately we think God is still in control. That ultimately we have the freedom to laugh. Otherwise we'd have only despair, only regrets out there. And so the childlike attitude of being able to laugh doesn't go out of favor just because we get older. In fact, I would even argue that when you get older, we may have an opportunity to, to lose some of our inhibitions. We may be able to laugh about some things that we weren't able to do when we were in different circumstances. I'm no longer dean of Earlham School of Religion. I don't have to laugh at the jokes of some of our big donors anymore.
Sorry to bring that up, Teresa, but... Uh, <laughs> and I was on a program one time to, to give the, uh, the prayer. It was at the retirement uh, party for Landrum Bowling, who had been president of the college for a number of years. And he was a very important man in the world of higher education. And so a retired university president, who was a close friend of his, had come to give a speech. And there were hundreds of people in the dining hall. And I happened to be placed next to this man, who was a delightful dinner companion. He regaled us with stories. He was hilarious. Retired university president. I won't give you his name because what he did that I will never forget was that while we were talking and he was telling one of his stories, he took his crackers, crunched them up in his hand, put them in his milk glass, and then slurped the concoction and we were sitting on the dais up in front of 700 people. And I thought, oh, I hope someday I can be old enough or rich enough <laughs> to be able to do what I want to do. I hope that aging frees us from the sin that so many young people commit, namely, of taking ourselves too seriously. The other general session was a panel discussion led by retired Manchester College professor David Waz on a Christian's involvement in the political world. We can find in our citizenship and in our Christian faith a relationship which will make us actually stronger in both. They are not exclusive, in my judgment. They are something which supports which nurture each other. And that if we take both seriously, we are better in both. And we can become a part of the process of enhancing both the political state and the Christian community of which we are part. Panelists included Tim McElwee, until recently the Church of the Brethren representative in the Washington, D.C. office, Shirley Wampler, a health care provider from Virginia, and Olive Peters, a longtime letter writer and political activist from Boonesboro, Maryland. Interspersed among the general sessions and after the worship was a new feature which gained popularity as the week progressed, a feature called NOAC News. It was designed to provide an opportunity for NOAC staff and leadership to make announcements to the whole group and to show conference goers where events were to be happening using pre-recorded video clips which were played back on monitors set up throughout the Stewart Auditorium. But as the week progressed, NOACers got more than simple announcements. During the tour through the exhibit hall, for example, detailing all the different exhibits that were set up, viewers began noticing the same person staffing each exhibit. Annual conference moderator David Wine, who is also president of the Church of the Brethren Mutual Aid Association. He showed up at all of the exhibits, but one, his own. No, I don't know where he's at. Well, haven't you seen him? Hasn't he been around? No, he hasn't. Okay, thanks. Other video segments included an interview with Raymond Peters, former annual conference moderator and general secretary, and with Don Miller, who's retiring at the end of the year as general secretary. Another video segment outlined the miracle recovery by the Brethren's home at Greenville, Ohio, from deep financial troubles. NOAC News also kept track of the expected arrival of Hurricane Fran through weatherman John Eichelberger. It provided an introduction to the steering committee, information about different programs such as Grandparents for Peace and BVS. There was also information about the bombing of Iraq, which happened during the conference. But on the lighter side, it charted the progress of NOAC news reporter Chris Brown, who became intrigued with the idea of having his own tram stop. If I just set the tram stop sign down here, if maybe I can make my own tram stop. As the week progressed, Chris sought different sure ways to get the tram driver to stop just for him. Everything from putting out his own sign to engaging the help of a no-acker, and at one point even lying down in the path of the tram. Look, Dave, has it gotten this bad? It has. They won't stop for no anything. It, I don't. I mean, if you would just go to a regular stop, regular? a tram stop. No, no way. I gotta have my own stop because you know it has to be convenient for me. Okay. All right. So. So what are you gonna, gonna do? do? All right. It's come this far. 
I'm going to put down yeah. the tram stop sign. So when but he come, didn't stop when you tried it. that last time. Well, I know, but see, the difference is this time I'm going to lie down the street, and he Chris, has to no, stop. No, it's not that. Chris, you, you can't just lie there. The tram is coming. The tram will be here any minute. You can't, you're going to stay there and you think he's going to stop? Yes, he'll stop. He has to. There's no way he'll run over me. Well, that didn't work. The running gag culminated during the final video clip, the NOAC quiz, during which Chris not only got a ride, but took control of the entire tram for a while. It added a little bit of lightness and kind of lightened things up and it wasn't so heavy and you didn't go from one thing right into another. It, there was a little bit of laughter and humor and sometimes in the world today, it's, uh, there's not enough humor. We don't, we don't laugh at ourselves and we don't laugh at other things enough. The tram service, while a source of humor for NOAC News, was actually an essential part of NOAC, providing the primary transportation option between conference housing, which was scattered throughout the Lake Junaluska assembly grounds, and the main buildings where much of the NOAC conference was held. For most of the week, two trams ran constantly and provided excellent service. NOACers needed the trams to travel between the location of their housing, where they ate their meals, and the location of many of the conference events, such as interest groups. Similar to insight sessions at annual conference, nearly 50 interest groups provided information on a wide variety of topics. Everything from a session on family issues to the situations in Bosnia and Sudan. There was an interest group on the current restructuring of the denominational program. One on becoming peaceful grandparents. One on women of the Bible. For those interested in learning new skills, handcrafts were taught. There was a session on applique quilting led by Rachel Brown. And one on whittling by Dean Eggy. Residents of the nearby Cherokee village led some of the handcraft sessions, including one on basket weaving, on pottery making, and stone carving. Freeman Owl, a popular teller of stories of Native American culture, led a session, as did Marilyn McKinn McCready, who shared what was described as an authentic bag of ghost stories, Indian legends, tall tales, folk songs, and mountain lore. Recreation was also an afternoon option. Besides the exercise provided by a walk around the lake, there was also tennis, horseshoes, shuffleboard. A golf tournament was held at a nearby golf course for teams of four golfers. Some 40 players were able to complete the tournament before the rains came. It seemed to be raining or threatening to rain practically the whole week, which kept more of the recreation indoors than usual. Among the evening entertainment was a group called the Ministers of Music from Pennsylvania. Stand up and, and a nightly session on line dancing. Among the notable events at NOAC was a marriage proposal by Les Schallenberger to Maxine Zug. Both are residents at Pennsylvania's Brethren Village. She said yes. And a guest appearance by the National Youth Cabinet we met at Lake Junaluska for a day and extended an invitation to the next NOAC steering committee to attend National Youth Conference in two years. Music was a very important part of NOAC and was an essential ingredient of the worship services. With Carl Scholl on the organ and Dorothy Scholl and Joyce Nolan on piano, each worship service was introduced by the singing of hymns led each evening by a different song leader. The conference choir was directed by Will Nolan
New to NOAC this year was a handbell choir directed by Kay Allwine from Roanoke, Virginia. For many, the worship services provided the high point of the week. Tuesday's service was led by Leah and Nevin Zook from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Nevin preached a sermon on God's beautiful people. Every human being, every human being, is a special and unique creation of God, blessed by God, endowed with God's image, deserving the respect of all other people, and deserving equal access to all of the bounties of this creation. And that each of us is called of God, given gifts with which to contribute to this ongoing project of creation. Wednesday's worship service featured a drama by Delbert Blickenstaff and Don Parker, both from Ohio, on the parable of the publican and the sinner. I thank you, Lord that I am unique and not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this, this, you, I guess so, here, I think so, Lord is nothing holy. Is your house no longer holy? Lord, there are sinners here. Well, I would think so. Lord, do you know who that man is? I certainly hope so. He's a thief, a traitor, the most notorious publican in the city. That's ex-publican, ex-publican. I'm in the process of repenting. Earlier, both men, along with their wives, had presented a drama depicting different ways of viewing the offering. Actual offerings during the week raised a total of $13,000, which will be used to support older adult ministries and the work of the denomination through the Behold, I Make All Things New campaign. Thursday evening's worship service was led by another couple, Bob and Nancy Faust. Bob, recently retired as ministry consultant for, for the denomination, reason, was I worship leader, and Nancy, a longtime faculty member at Bethany Seminary, preached Secondly, a sermon, urging Noakers to pass their dreams on to their children. My dear sisters and brothers, your mission and my mission is to pass on the faith that we have received simply by living a life of faith. As we dream our faith-filled dreams for the generations that follow us, we must then give those dreams to our loving God and let God decide how they're to be lived out in those we love. We cannot and must not try to control the results, but we must trust that God will act in God's good way and in God's good time. Remember the saying on the church bulletin, in history there are no solitary dreams. One dreamer breathes life into the next. As long as you have life and breath, keep dreaming and keep living out your dreams. Friday morning's closing worship was led by Jean Hendricks, we director of ministry training for the Church of the Brethren. Unique. The service began with NOAC participants bringing a symbolic gift to the front of the auditorium and placing it on the edge of the stage. The gift symbolized a skill or personal attribute that each could contribute to one's church, home, community, or world. 
The service also included the anointing of each participant. The anointing started on stage and through the ushers was carried back through the assembled body to include everyone. Anointing in the Church of the Brethren has become an important symbol and is, it is an activity shared by all believers, not only those set apart for ministry. Today we anoint not so much for healing as for invoking God's strength and sharing a blessing with one another. You are our only comforter, peace of the soul. Noack was a time to explore the dreams that older adults have for themselves and for the church. But it was also an opportunity to renew friendships, to strengthen all aspects of Christian faith. It shows the gifts um, and the talent, the vitality of people our age and I'm just so proud of, to be a part of this age group. There's an open-mindedness and a, a desire to grow and learn. That's, that's very contagious. I like that. When you uh, rub shoulders with a lot of uh, like-minded people, people who are committed to Jesus, uh, you can't help but feel stronger in your own faith. And I, I felt that here, uh, the, the, the strength that you gather from other people. For me, it was a worship time and the spiritual um, enrichment that I gained from being here and singing in the choir. And um, it, it's, it's wonderful to leave with that kind of a, a feeling of spiritual renewal. It's, it's been wonderful. It's like, an, like they say, annual conference only without the business. The most wonderful thing was seeing so many of our friends here and enjoying this beautiful surrounding and um, having the fellowship with uh, friends we have known for years. Anytime you're, you're where you uh, uh, experience uh, the moving of the Spirit, it renews you and you, you feel like uh, going about life in a, in a more positive way. And continue to dream. I think we've learned that here. Dream and try to carry those dreams out. The inspiration, challenging people to say, you, you do have gifts, they're valuable gifts, and I hope they heard the message of the church that uh, they're still needed, they're, they're wanted, uh, and uh, it's really an exciting group. They have so many tremendous gifts to offer, and, uh, and I hope they become assertive back home in offering those gifts.